Hi guys, welcome to my podcast. My name is Nicole and I am the brains and the beauty behind Yarn Craft by Nicole. I am so excited to be on this yarn chat with you today because it has been two weeks and I've got a lot of very cool things to show you. Last week my husband and I were traveling um, on a mega road trip from Michigan to Virginia, from Virginia to New York, and from New York back home to Michigan. So I had lots of time to crochet and I've got some very cool things. But before we get into that, I wanted to show off my featured make. This is the Towpath Cowl from Terrapin Fiberworks. I think that I have worn it on here before, but honestly, I don't know if it's because it's just really nice and bright outside today, or the fact that I'm wearing it with a darker color than I usually do. But the last time I wore this, I do not remember noticing all of these pops of orange, and I really like it. I made this with two one-of-a-kind skeins from uh, Montana Crochet. She had a big sale, and I love it. I think the colors are just perfect. And I have a little bit left of each color that I'm gonna use in a project sometime probably this summer. But I really like this. And because it is a double thickness cowl, um, this morning when it was roughly 30 degrees when I went to work, it was the perfect little thing to throw on. It wasn't too bulky, but it did provide a layer of warmth for today. So I really like this one. So where to begin? I think we got to start with some finished makes. So I'm going to start with my Anthea jumper. If you follow me on Instagram, you saw yesterday that I posted some pictures of this. It was mostly done the last time I saw you. I think maybe it, it wasn't seamed together. I can't remember how far it was last time that y'all saw it, but I really like this. Um, we actually were without power uh, the week before we left, so I got a lot of work on it done then as well. I think I did both of the sleeves like over the day and a half we didn't have power because there just wasn't a whole lot to do besides crochet and try to be warm. But it's all done. I really like this pattern. It's got this ombre stitch um, detail. It starts with the alpine stitch to the bottom and kind of ombres up. It's worked in panels which is not usually my favorite way to work a sweater. However, this sweater worked up really quickly. It calls for Aran weight yarn. I used worsted weight yarn. Um, Aran is a little bit thicker than worsted, and but I met Gage with a worsted weight yarn and the size hook that was recommended. So I was good on that. I love the color. Um, <laughs> when I started working on the sweater, my husband and I were debating on whether or not the sweater was pink or red. I thought the sweater was pink, like a berry pink, and he was like, no, you're crazy, it's red. I did a poll on Instagram. Overwhelmingly, people agreed with him. And then I looked up the name of the color because it's from Barocco and on their tags it just has a number, but I looked up the name of it and it's ruby. So I guess I have to admit that this is a red sweater, but I really like it. I love the color on me. Um, and it's mildly cropped. Um, a couple of people who are testing it now are adding a little bit of length. And then the sleeves are bracelet length. If I were to make another one, which could happen, um, I know that my sister-in-law already wants one, so I would be happy to make one for her. I might make the sleeves a smidge longer and I might make the neck a smidge smaller. Um, but because it has worked in panels, like the neckline really isn't stretching out that much. I use Barocco Vintage for this. Um, which is an acrylic and wool blend. It's got a lovely feel to it, pretty cost-effective yarn, um, and I will probably throw this in the wash, maybe the washer and the dryer. I'll have to look at the care instructions. Um, because it is a little bit oversized, if it did shrink a smidge in the dryer, that wouldn't be the worst thing, but I really like this. And that's the Anthea jumper. It's currently in testing. It is from Hollywood Word Designs. Um, it is written in UK terms, which is one of the reasons I wanted to test for her because I've never made anything worked in UK terms and I wanted to make sure I could do it and I can so happy about that. The I also finished this. I actually did not finish these on the road trip but that was my own silly fault because I forgot to bring the pattern. This is another set of modified gloves, fingerless mitts from Tony Lipsy's book the Tunisian Crochet Handbook. These are called the Lexington Cashmere Gloves. They are written for a 
I think it might be an Aaron Waite. Um, I think it is Aaron Waite yarn. The first set of gloves that I made were in a DK weight yarn. And then this time I actually used a fingering weight yarn held double. So I guess that kind of makes it a sport weight. Modified the pattern a little bit there too, but holy moly, these are pretty. I'm actually sending these off to a friend of mine. She saw the picture on my website where I'm like fully decked out and all of these crocheted items. She's like, how about those gloves though? So I gave her some options of the yarn I already had in my stash and it was between this one and another one. This one is from Terrapin Fiberworks. It's called You Look Like Seafood, named after um, the, the line in Moana. And I really like it. It's on a tinsel base, which is a little bit shinier, but it just, it's, it's delightful. So um, I also knew it was super skinny, so that's why I held it double, but it came out really cute. I like these a lot and because they're made out of tinsel, um, super easy to care for. So wins all the way around. These will be mailed off to her probably on Monday. Um, and I really like the way that these turned out. I, and it's funny because I, I think I like might like these more than the pair I made for myself, but that's the way you want it, right? Like if you're making something for someone else, you want it to be better than the version that they saw. I do have more yarn in my stash that I think could be really good for some gloves. I keep telling myself that I'm going to make some to uh, be available for purchase. Maybe one of these days I will, because honestly, they don't take that long, especially if I actually used a chunk of yarn or a worsted yarn instead of modifying it for smaller stitches. But I really liked these. I, I uh, wound the yarn up from the hank and packed it up, had the right hook, ready to go but forgot to bring the book that had the pattern in it. And I just was not confident that I was going to remember how to do them, which I would not have. So those are super cute. Now, the moment you've been waiting for, did I finish the modified Lugome sweater with the Hiloko yarn? You bet your butt I did. It's so Clearly there are some ends that I need to weave in, especially this one on the bottom. I did block it and um, I have tried it on since I blocked it and it does fit exactly the way that I anticipated. I made the sleeves, like I ended the sleeves a little bit shorter than I thought I would need because I knew it was going to grow a little bit when I blocked it. And I'm very pleased with that. I'm very pleased with the length of it. It is not cropped. Um, and I still have some of this color left over. so. I had the right amount of yarn. I, I think I could have made the sweater with only buying three skeins of yarn, but it would have for sure been cropped. And I'm glad I don't have to worry about that. So I really like this. I considered wearing this um, today, but um, we're gonna have pasta later and I don't trust me to not get pasta on this quite yet. I am gonna be wearing this when I go to the Midwest Craft Con at the end of this month in March. So I haven't decided if I want to take finished object pictures in it first and post those or if I just want to debut it there. I don't know, but I really, I really like it. I really like the way that it came out. It feels very happy and it feels very, I don't know, it feels like a, a work of art, like something that I can be really proud that I made and that it looks like it was a lot of work. And it, it was, but it wasn't an unrealistic amount of work. Like all of this, all of the body that has this really pretty texture looks complicated, but it's really not. Um, so I'm a fan. I really like the way that it, that it ends off with this faux eye cord. Um, it was a little bit tedious to do that from the way that you fold it over and kind of seam it onto itself, but I think well worth it. And it was nice too, to have a long-term project that did not have to, like a deadline per se. Like I wanted to wear it for, Midwest Craft Con, but I, get, I started this in January. So I gave myself lots of time to work on it and very, very happy with the results. Uh, this is heavily modified in the original version of the Legome sweater. Like the mosaic part comes down to about here. And again, because I was using minis, I did not do that. And I'm very pleased with the way that mine came out. Very happy with this. Very glad that nothing got on it while I was working on it. I don't own a whole lot of white or cream items because I am a bit of a mess, but this felt, this felt like a special occasion to use 
lots of beautiful cream yarn. So those are my finished objects. I do have a couple of works in progress still. I'll start with another road trip one. I have a bunch of scraps that I thought went well together. So I put them together in a Ziploc bag so I could remove to use them correct, like all together, make sure I had the right colors. This is actually the, what I have left over from the sweater. So it's a decent amount. I think I used, I don't know, not quite half, maybe 40% of the last tank that I had, but I think it complements the other colors well. So I've got a couple of sunburst granny squares. It's just so pretty. And then this has a little bit of that cream right in the middle of it. I like it a lot. And I've got, I think six colors. Yeah, six colors. So um, it gives a little bit of variation from square to square. Not all squares will have the same colors in them, which is kind of nice. And I'm doing another wall hanging. Um, this one should be for my mom. They feel like her colors, especially like this blue and this red are very much my mom's color scheme. And I think the cream will be nice too, to have that as another neutral in here. So I've got this, and then the other two projects that I'm working on. One of them I started on the road trip, so I can show you that one. This one uses some 50 gram skeins that I got when I went to Kansas City the last time. These are all from Goosey Fibers. And originally I was going to design something with them. Like a, uh, I had an idea for a gingham cowl. I didn't love the way it worked up. I tried it a couple of different times and then I decided that they would be really cute in a hoist the colors cowl from the Crafty Crocheter. Her pattern is designed for minis. I think it uses nine minis, but I have three 50 gram hanks that I'm using instead. So I'm just, using a lot more of each color than what she calls for um, to make up for the fact that I only have three colors instead of nine. So let me show you what it looks like so far. It's a Tunisian project. So it's still on my hook. It's got rows of Tunisian simple stitch and then it also has Tunisian triple crochet. Pretty sure I'm doing these right. It's the first time I've ever done those. Um, and then you work it in a fade. So this is where I faded in the second color which is this guy right here. And then I'll go into the orange at the end. I really like that each color gets a good amount of space because even the most neutral of the color has a little bit of the orange, has a little bit of blue. There's some purple in there. And then the purple has a lot more of the orange, honestly, and it just fades really nicely. So these two colors fading in together will be lovely as well. And it is going to be a cowl, so it is going to attach in the back. So I can kind of show you what it's going to look like so far. But the back is very cool because you could do the option of just seaming it together in the back. Or you could do this cool corset style detail where it's laced at the back, and that's what I'm doing. So what I have left of the first color is going to kind of go on the, the sides of what will become the lace up. And then I think... I haven't decided if I'm gonna use, probably will use the orange for the higher contrast, um, but using another one of those to create basically an eye cord to, um, to lace it up. But I think it's gonna be very cute and I've never seen anything like it. And that's usually a good thing. <laughs> when I see something creative, it's like, oh, I've never seen anything like that. I wanna try that. So I'm really liking this. This is my work on it during breaks at work project because it's relatively small. My mindless don't have to do any real thinking project that I'm working on once I get home is a baby blanket for a friend of ours. So let me show you the front. It's another Tunisian project. Clearly I'm on another Tunisian kick. Um, and it's all Tunisian simple stitch. It's far too wide but obviously I'm not going back and taking out anything now. I'm still figuring out when I am doing Tunisian just how big something is going to be at the beginning, but I'd rather have it too big than too small. And all of the yarn that I have here was gifted to me um, from someone who wasn't going to use it and was about to move. So I have a lot of the green 
I have a decent amount of the yellow. I have plenty of the brown because I bought the brown um, to go with it when I thought I was going to do the corner to corner blanket. Um, and then I have enough of the navy. There's also a light blue that's almost the same color as the green. Like it's the same tone. It's about the same saturation level, but it's blue that I thought I would put in there as well. But I think it's just going to be too many colors. So I'm going to stick with these. And I'm really liking the way that it looks. And I just like the crisp stripes of Tunisian. And it feels good. I think this might be the first Tunisian worsted weight that I've made. Because the last time I did a Tunisian baby blanket, it was in, um, I think it was a DK. But it feels really good. I like the weight of this quite a lot. And it definitely makes me want to make a Tunisian sweater. Which leads us right into yarn love. I will also tell you that this is all Karen, what is it called? Maybe Karen Simply Soft yarn. Um, you can find at Michael's or Joann's. And then the brown is Big Twist Heather. Um, I don't know if you can see it from here, but it's got a little bit of a heather to it. Um, which I really like working with a lot. Um, it just feels good, feels squishy. I'm a fan. We have several people um, in our friend circle that are expecting this year. And I think at least three of them are getting Tunisian baby blankets because now I'm having fun playing with Tunisian. Speaking of, um, for yarn love, I've got a couple of different yarns to show you. So since we were just on a Tunisian kick, the first thing I'm gonna show you is a bunch of woolies. In fact, this is all the woolies that I got. Lion Brand was having a sale on their kits, and I have wanted to make the December cardigan from Tony, um, from Tail Yarn Crafts for a while. It's Tunisian. I was afraid of it at first. I was like, I don't, I don't think I can do it. I think it's going to be too hard. But with this sale, and again, I've become more and more confident with Tunisian. I was like, I can figure it out. Um, and it's, I mean, it's a Tail Yarn Crafts pattern, and she knows how to write a pattern, so I should be able to figure it out. So I got um, I got the kit, which included the pattern and then the yarn. They were sold out of the hooks, which is why I haven't started it yet. So I'm gonna go to spun over the weekend. And I'm gonna get myself a hook that's the right size for this um, and that has the right length of cable. And then I'll get started on this. In my mind, I had ordered red yarn. I don't know why I thought I had ordered red yarn. I've been on like a red and pink kick um, where I'm like, oh, I look so good in red and pink. But I knew the name of the color was Koi and that's K-O-I. That's usually the name of a, an orange fish. So when I opened it, I was like, oh, it's orange. Did I know I was buying orange? I don't know, but I look great in orange and I don't own much of it, which is probably what I was thinking when I ordered it. It's Wool Ease, which is a blend of wool and acrylic. Yep, wool acrylic, no nylon, um, which I've used before. I used it when I did my Tunisian two-tone cowl, and I like it a lot. It has a good feel to it, um, so I'm excited to work on this, but it will live in this bag until I'm allowed to start that project. I do have two pattern tests that I have not started that might need to get finished before I'm allowed to start that. But again, it's a, it's a warm weather garment. Theoretically, we're in March. Theoretically, it could get started much later and be just fine because theoretically there's not a lot of winter left. I say, knowing that tomorrow we might get eight inches of snow. So now that we've done all of that, there's one more bit of yarn love that I want to show you from our road trip. Since we love to visit local yarn stores when we travel, we went to one in Richmond, Virginia, like right outside of Richmond, Virginia, called Knitting Bee. Um, I will put that below. It's knitting and then just the letter B. And they were great. They had a ton of really nice yarn and I had a price limit when I went in because I knew that I was going to buy a lot of yarn um, with a collection release from Sorella and just knew we were going to be traveling a lot. I was like, okay, I need to get out of here $50 and under because this is just for fun yarn. It's not for a specific project. So I spent a lot of time there and um, asked my husband his opinion, asked my sister-in-law her opinion on what we found. And 
I'll, I'll start with what I, I wasn't sure I could put down and it ripped a little bit in traveling, but this is El Rey Kid Sparkle, which is mohair with some metallic in it. And I don't know if that's coming through on the camera. Um, it's 30, 38% acrylic, 31% nylon, 27% mohair and 4% polyester. And it is a two weight yarn. So I can show you there. The mohair is definitely giving it more, yeah, so you can see, um, giving it a little bit more heft because I probably would have classified that as a lace weight yarn, but it is pretty fluffy. I saw this and I don't know, there was something about the sparkle on it and the mohair. I was like, I don't, I've never seen anything quite like this. I really like it. Um, the name of the color is Glacier and I just thought that was perfect. So I was like, well, I can get this and then I can find something to pair with it. And this has a lot of yardage. This has 970, 907 yards. So lots and lots of yards for this 100 gram ball. Let me make sure I'm not telling you lies here. Yeah, 100 gram donut. That was another thing that cracked at my sister-in-law when I called this a donut. I'm like, that's what these are called. They're called donuts. So I found some more donuts to go with it. So this, and this is from El Array. I've used El Array before. Um, I used their DK denim with the Cabana Cardi that I made, and I really liked it. Um, we had a lot of El Array in the yarn shop that I worked at in um, Kentucky. So I was very familiar with this brand, but I wasn't familiar with this yarn. This is a brand, Universal Yarn that I had seen before on Instagram. I had seen some people that I follow use it and like it, know that it's a good affordable budget yarn and, but I'd never seen it in stores and I hadn't ordered anything yet. So I got two donuts of this, the super, um, the deluxe worsted tweed, which is a super wash. And each of these has 218 yards the name of this color. Do you have a cute name or do you have a number name? Cloud blue. Appropriate. So I have two of these and then this to go with it. And that is what I'm going to do. This has a slightly different blue, but I think by just holding it one with these that it'll make a really pretty cowl. And I'm also very curious as to how the mohair and the sparkle are gonna play with the tweed. It could be really obnoxious, but I think because the color is so soothing that it won't be really obnoxious. And if it is, then I'll just take it out and try something different. But my idea for this is of course a cowl because we know, we know I like to design a cowl and we know that I like to wear a cowl. And I'm thinking very simple stitch maybe with some puff stitches, maybe. I have an idea of like a puff and linen stitch cowl. In my brain, it's wonderful, but I haven't swatched it out yet, but I'm really happy with this. And this all together, I think was about 45 bucks, which was not bad at all. Um, so I'm really happy to play with all this. A new to me yarn, a new to me yarn company. Not mad at that at all. And that is all that I have to show you this week, which is pretty great. I should have some more yarn coming in for a, a project uh, for a batter test that I have not started yet, but um, that should be coming in over the weekend. But that is all the, the new to me yarn. So I'm gonna wrap it up with two things that I can't let go of. First thing, today's my husband's birthday and I'm super excited that we could just finish together. He was in the military when we started dating and for the first year and change of our marriage. And it was pretty common for us not to see each other on his birthday or my birthday, just the way that it shook out. So every year now that I get to see him on his birthday feels like a really special occasion. So we're gonna be um, spending tonight at our favorite local restaurant, eating entirely too much pasta and coming back for our birthday apple pie because that is what he wanted. So. Um, very excited about that. And that is, I mean, that's just a good way to spend a birthday. 
And then the other thing that I can't let go of is I hit another one of my goals this year, and that was to have a thousand uh, followers on Instagram. So if you follow me on Instagram, you saw that I hit that this week. Super pumped about that. I'm going to be doing a giveaway over this weekend. I have some ideas about what to do for that. I think it's going to include um, like something that I have handmade, like one of my projects. I think it's going to include either something from my local yarn store or maybe a gift card. Um, I've got a couple of ideas for some goodies that'll go in there, but it feels really nice to be in a community that supports each other and um, to feel feel like I'm making an impact and it's, it's just nice. So I'm really proud of that. I can't let go of it. If you aren't following me on Instagram, I'm Yarncraft by Nicole everywhere. You can also check me out on my website, Yarncraft by Nicole. I have a post about um, the road trip that we took last week, as well as how I pack for road trips. What, what whips did I bring? Why did I bring them? Um, and next week I should be right back here next week. We are traveling again next weekend, but I think I can squeeze in recording a video before we head out. And with that, I'm going to say goodbye so I can get ready for all of the pasta tonight. And I will see you back here next week. If you like this video, make sure that you like and subscribe. Bye.